This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy. He's here. Welcome to the Barbados Today Evening Update for Thursday, April 2nd. I'm Fernella Wedderburner. Topping the news this evening, the Barbados Investment and Development Corporation says it will be taking some of its tenants to court. The corporation says the move is part of several urgent measures aimed at recovering $11.2 million owed in rent, a situation Chief Executive Officer Sonja Trotman says has placed the institution under severe financial strain. Speaking during a press conference this morning, Trotman revealed that some 23 of their 181 tenants will be affected by the move. Effective May 1, 2015, the corporation will be enforcing stricter rent collection measures. The new control measures may include, but are not limited to, the issuance of notices to quit and eviction of delinquent tenants, non-provision of maintenance and other services to the tenants in arrears. Over the next few weeks, therefore, the corporation will also seek to recover its properties through legal action and initiation of lockdowns against those tenants whose accounts have remained in arrears for inordinately long periods, despite every effort extended to collect on receivables. Moves by the U.S. to slash funding for its military activities in the region is bad news for Barbados and its Caribbean neighbors. So warns Attorney General Adriel Brafwit, who says the fight against crime and natural disasters is now at risk because the Southern Command now has to operate on fewer resources. He made the comments as he addressed those in attendance at the opening of the new headquarters of the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency at Lower Estate this morning. At a time when we need the U.S. Southern Command more than ever, that I, I've noted um, a reduction in the budget available to U.S. Southern Command, it does concern me and I, and I think it should concern us um, in the region, not only um, from a security perspective, but certainly also um, to enable um, them to respond to humanitarian um, missions um, in this region. It does concern us slightly um, that given this the difficulties that, that we're having in terms of increased um, drug treatment through the region, um, given our vulnerability to natural and man-made disasters, etc., um, that we probably need more support in the region as opposed to, to less um, support. All school-based assessment projects must be graded by teachers. The directive from the Ministry of Education in response to statements made by the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union that students will not be disadvantaged if their SBAs are not graded. In a statement this afternoon, the ministry made it clear that the projects are school-based and are part of continuous assessments and therefore must be done at school and as such, it says the teachers are responsible to mark the work of students. To news from the law court, a 37-year-old barber from St. Philip has been charged in connection with the country's latest murder. Rodani Ricardo Dabrio of Seaview Road appeared in court today charged with the stabbing death of Erskine Gunning. Gunning died at the hospital on Monday following an altercation in Paradise Village, Christchurch. As Barbadians turn their attention to the long Easter weekend, the opposition Barbados Labour Party is concerned about what it says is a lack of leadership to those entrusted to govern. In fact, in her Easter message, BLP leader Mia Motley maintained that the Barbadian society is reeling from scars of disappointment and a lack of hope. She pointed to what she says are too many signs of people longing for relief from the harsh conditions that they are now faced to live in, especially during a season that inspires hope. And she says at a time when leadership is endangered, the life of Christ must be emulated in representing the interest 
of the people. But in his analogy of the Easter story, Prime Minister Frondo Stewart said that Good Friday and Easter clearly showed that there could be no shortcuts to prosperity. And that is the story of the lives of all of us. It is what the world is going through now. After the downturn of the last quarter of 2007, there were huge sacrifices that had to be made. A long Good Friday. But for some countries, Easter has begun to manifest. And those countries, of course, include Barbados. We haven't got past all the challenges, but we understand that there can be no Easter without Good Friday. Prime Minister Frondel Stewart speaking at the final reception for repeat visitors at Ilaro Court last night. There's regional and international news after this short break. A test of character, a test of focus, a test of will, a test of resilience, a test of courage. Barbados, the test is on. West Indies, England, May 1st at the Mecca. Tickets 30, 40, 50, and $60. It's on. Are you Barbados is on. news from the region, the Trinidad government is denying reports that it purchased costly Ebola equipment. According to international reports, Port of Spain is one of two clients to buy the Odule Ebola isolation unit. But the health minister says the purchase has not yet been made. More in this TV6 news report. I see no reason for it to, to, to be purchased right now because I spoke to the chief medical officer and we did some research into it. And Pan American Health Organization experts came to Trinidad and Tobago and they indicated that what we have in Cora is way above what we, we need for an Ebola patient. Minister Khan says approximately 12 million TT dollars was going to be spent on the mobile unit. And the government told Audule that it didn't want the unit again. The company was pushing us to do it. And we got some information that I don't want to say it on air. And we decided that our Cora unit was good. Paho said it was good, and we decided not to go that way anymore. And finally, on the international scene, the death toll in the campus massacre in Kenya rises to 147 following an attack by Al-Shabaab militants. According to officials, the four attackers were also killed. The Greece University College has since been secured following this morning's deadly incident, which also left 79 students nursing injuries. An overnight curfew is now in effect in parts of the country. And that's our Barbados Today evening update, but you can join us again first thing on Tuesday morning. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 101 on Lime TV, as well as Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. And from all of us here at Barbados today, have a blessed and wonderful Easter weekend. This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy.